Hello guys, so I am uh, currently up in my rooftop. This is a very quick video. I'm shooting this uh, handheld on my phone because I have a tip for you that uh, potentially could save you a lot of trouble. Uh, turns out I was all my years of doing astrophotography, I didn't know how to correctly calculate uh, back focus with a telescope and an astro camera system like the one behind me. Uh, here I'm actually testing the uh, SV Bulli SV555 um, astro camera lens as they say uh, which is a wide field telescope for astrophotography uh, i'm loving it so far you can expect some sort of a review um, very very soon maybe next week maybe in two weeks uh, i'm working on it i have some good nights ahead so uh, uh, i will be uh, collecting some some data to to later uh, take a look at uh, and i want to talk about the back focus situation that i have right here as you can see i have the let me actually flip this around so what I have here uh, is uh, my uh, ASI 294mm Pro from ZWO. I have a filter wheel, I have a rotator, and here is the uh, telescope. So normally with telescopes, and this one included, you uh, need to use the 55 millimeters of back focus, which means that the camera sensor should be spaced with 55 millimeters uh, counting from the flange of the telescope, which would be uh, right here. This is already a spacer and this is the rest of the stuff. So. I was using uh, calipers, a professional tool to measure this. Might be actually hard to tell here and put these calipers up against this rig because of the uh, rotator and filter in, in this kind of a funky uh, configuration. But this, what I have here, gives me 48 millimeters. So the spacers are essentially the filter wheel, which is right up against the camera, which is 20 millimeters. Then there's the rotator with adapters, which adds up to 18. This gives me 38. And then I have a 10 millimeter spacer from Explore Scientific, which gets me up to 48. And 48 is not 55. And with this setup, I actually do have perfect stars and perfectly, uh, I am perfectly able to focus. But I was trying to use a bigger spacer yesterday, 15 millimeters, to get me up more up to 55. And I wasn't able to reach focus. And it turns out that actually inside the camera, there's also an internal back focus because the 55 millimeters is not from the camera to the flange it's from the camera sensor to the flange and the sensor obviously in most cameras is not going to be right up against the thread when you screw it into something it's going to be a little bit further inside the actual body of the camera so for every camera this value would be different for this particular camera the value is 6.5 millimeters and if you add it to 48 this arrives at 54.5 which is an acceptable margin and i'm able to focus perfectly and have very very good stars so if you are trying to get a good back focus without taking into account this distance from the actual front of the camera to the camera sensor you definitely need to take this into account. I have been doing this mistake for years, apparently. Thank you, as Viboni, for <laughs> pointing that out for me. I feel like such a stupid person now, but I wouldn't believe that uh, I'm the only one. Probably there are more people who are not aware of this, so this video is for you. And for your particular camera, the manufacturer's website should include this information, how much of a back focus this camera adds to the imaging train and you need to include that in these calculations. So hope this was helpful and see you next time with the review of the SV555 and have a wonderful day and rest of the week. See ya.